I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 with my father and brother and I. We're at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. Today is December 11th at 631. The please note that this meeting is being made available to the public through a rec an audio recording which will be used to ensure an accurate record of the proceedings produced in the minutes of the meeting. All comments made in open session will be recorded. Um, I don't want to keep you. Mr. Thorne is here. He is here to discuss with this board um, the request to consolidate animal inspector duties with the duties of the health agent. So without further ado, Mr. Thorne. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I'd like to share with the, the board <coughs> um, information that uh, we put together for you folks uh, for this evening regarding a vote that the Board of Selectmen took last Monday night uh, regarding the uh, issue of combining the animal inspector with the Board of Health agent and the Board of Selectmen uh, deemed it necessary and um, that this occur. Um, the current health agent has been accepting that salary as part of her weekly check, uh, you know, for several years now. And uh, we uh, wanted to uh, consolidate those duties uh, under the health agent and uh, uh, under the Board of Health. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Comments? Ed, uh, under a, purely a hypothetical, I'm, I'm just going to pull some numbers out of my hat. Let's just say that uh, as animal inspector, let's say that the current health agent, Ms. Cullity, is spending, I'll just pull a number out of my hat, six hours on any given week and knowing that it could change week to week. So would you envision that in a week where she's working six hours as the animal inspector, that her work week as the health agent would be 34 hours, or do you envision it, it would be 46 hours? Well, I think in, in a situation where you have an employee that has a couple of titles, but is on one paycheck, it, it's kind of blended. So it's really not a... Uh, you know, I think when we prepare a budget, um, you know, we talk to the employee, the, the department head, about the number of hours that they are, that they think they uh, undertook at each position during the course of, you know, a week or a month or something like that, to get an idea as to whether or not, um, especially the animal inspector position, needs to be adjusted. The health agent's one thing. Um, but, you know, in the case of the animal inspector, is the workload um, more than what they thought it would be? And then does that need, that would that require an adjustment as part of that? And then we would look at that, you know, at the Springtown meeting for FY19. Because <clears throat> right now I'm in the process of putting together um, the FY19 budget along with uh, Mike Butler. Okay. Thank you. Gail, any comments, questions, concerns? I, I still feel the same way that I did before. It is two different positions. We were signing two different payrolls for this. I have a concern as far as our food inspections. If we don't have time for our health agent to handle something that I consider to be um, a very high standard that we should be holding to, um, if we don't have enough time for her to handle the food inspections, I, I don't understand um, why we're incorporating another position. Okay, point taken. I think we, we, we went down, you know, we had um, in-depth conversations in regards to that. 
um, both with the selectmen as well as this board. Um, Mr. Thorne, the, uh, it was Monday night's meeting that the selectmen requested this? That's correct, and um, they voted uh, in executive session, <clears throat> and they will vote in open session tonight okay. to, you know, to reiterate the, the vote that they took last Monday night. Okay. So it'll be in the public record. Okay. Um, I would uh, like to make a motion to move that the Board of Health find that the services of lethal quality as the animal inspector shall be deemed to be within the scope of her duties as health agent. This finding is based upon the critical need to have the position of the animal inspector filled, the familiarity of Lisa Cullity with the operations of the town and issues related hereto, and Lisa Cullity's experience and qualifications to serve the town in both capacities. Do I hear a second? Before I second, Madam Chair, I do, I do have a comment that I'd like to make. Uh, well, I, I do in some respects echo some of the concerns that Ms. Sweeney, Ms. McSweeney has raised. Uh, what was prepared for us, particularly in the first paragraph, making reference to Lisa Cully's experience and qualifications. I know that she has held the position prior to, and I feel that she has done an excellent job, and I think that she will continue to do an excellent job. Do I wish that we had some another candidate that had come forth between when this situation first arose? Eh, quite honestly, I'd probably say yes. But given that, I, I wholeheartedly endorse Ms. Cullity taking the role, and I will second that motion. Okay. Uh, in favor? I am going to abstain from this vote. Um, again, okay. feeling the conflict between the two inspectional services, feeling that this is a different position. It has been in the past. Okay. Thank you. Point taken. You're welcome. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. And You're you folks welcome. Have a wonderful holiday. Great. You, you as too. well. Thank you very much. Okay. So, oh my, we have quite some time before Kevin Seelan arrives. Um, all right, then let's get to it. Do you want to do the? I'm going to do the minutes. Um, why don't Good. I go right to the um, minutes of the meeting? Um, Gail, you weren't here. This is the board meeting of November 13th. Mm -hmm. And I have a motion. Motion to accept minutes of the 13th of November 2017. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Gail, substitute. Wait. Are you not here? No. Nope. Didn't you? Nope. Nope. You went home sick. Oh, nope. that was no. the previous meeting. That was, My bad. Yeah, that was My before. Bad. Sorry. Um, Okay. Madam Chair, I received this in my packet. Um, this is in regards to 40 and Indian Trail. I was wondering if you could um, have the proper pa parties. These parties were not served by hand. This one's in New York, and this one has a different address. Mm. And I would suggest that... Um, well, I'll give this right back up to Ed Thorne. Okay. Because that's who it came from. Um, and they have Mr. Leary's um, address on file. I know they have that here, mm -hmm. as he was living at a different address okay. when he left. All right. Um, Just to, for the legality of it, I would appreciate it for the for the right parties to get notice notified. Uh, yeah, I will. Okay, I will, I will take care of that tomorrow. Thank um, you. Because that's not in our. Yes, I, I had that in my I had that in my packet today okay. and. All right, perfect. Um, all right, what one of the things we're going to go to, let's skip past SCOBY and Hollywood and Victoria, which is going to come up with the health agent's report. Let's pull that out because one of the things that has uh, transpired is we have an update on the field house or other well known as Wolf's Den. Uh, as we know, the engineering is back and the engineering was approved. The problem is, is that the estimated cost of the system is $350,000. Okay. He was looking, um, he did inquire, uh, Mr. Poirier, if there was any alternative options, like a tight tank. As of December 6th, 
per the health agent's conversation with Mr. Poirier, he wants to bring in portable bathroom trailer. Currently, right now, they are individual. You've already bodies. given the okay on this? I'm just finding out about this tonight. Oh, you are? I am. Um, to be able to bring a portable trailer in place of the outhouses, which are the individual units. They do not have running water. They do have uh, Purell. Um, our health agent allowed this because it is code. That does say complaint. It should say compliant. It says compliant. Oh, okay. Um, and offers hand washing with warm water in place of hand sanitizers, offering a higher standard of cleanliness. So, for an update, that's the update that we have. I would like to have a further discussion at our next meeting. I would like the board to consider. Um, I understand having a heated, closed, warm water facility through the winter time. I also understand that $350,000 is a lot of money, but I think a time constraint, it would behoove us not to put a, town, a time constraint on this. I mean, I don't want to have an outbuilding out there for two or three years. I'm confused on it. Do we? Do, did, it, this says I allowed this because the, it is code compliant. So do they have the portable? As of December 6th, there was a, how long of a lead wait is there? Six, Six, to, eight weeks the Six to eight weeks. So the health agent has allowed this because it is code compliant and it does offer more sanitary. Okay, so it, it has been approved and it is in effect. It, right now he's 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 putting got, an order in okay so it won't be in until end probably end of january beginning of february uh, I, I think we're talking about two different things i just want to clarify okay Please, go ahead gil are you asking if the trail has been offered or about the tanks being ordered uh no this says that uh the portable bathroom trail is in place of outhouses I don't know if they're there yet. They've been ordered. Hmm. They've been ordered. That's a, what I and understood it to be. And it was a he was given he was given the authorization to get use a port of a, a bathroom trailer instead yeah. of the single units. And there is a lead time on actually having the trailer put into place. Okay, so it's safe to say like 12-6 was the start that they were, they were starting to initiate the process the to put process. these in. Correct. The question I'd like the board to consider is do we in fact look at a time restraint on this or do we just allow a trailer as a considering it is now a complete outside facility? still can't use his kitchen can't have food so i just wanted to bring that up i think that it might be in our best interest for him to notify us when he um, is appraised of his delivery mm -hmm. um, and that maybe we should expect to hear something from him within the next month and if we don't that he let the board know where he is in standing. All right, so why don't we do this? Let's um, have let's reach out to Mr. Poirier, Sheila, yep. and have him um, notify us as of the date of the delivery. And then what I think we should do is bring that up at our net once we have that date, bring it up at the next scheduled meeting, okay. and then maybe look at you know how long are we going to allow this to be in place? Yeah, a couple of concerns that I have in, in building upon what you just said, Madam Chair. Once the portable trailers, now there's a some type of an estimated time frame when they'll come in. Mm -hmm. you now, given the fact that we're approaching winter, that that time of delivery could even be delayed. I'd also be interested in knowing what kind of a commitment did he have to make 
for these trailers? Is he mm -hmm. is he under a six month commitment? Is there a is there a minimum time frame that he has to have them? Can we put that in there, yeah. Sheila? And, and really, most importantly, and, and you said that clearly, the three hundred and fifty thousand for a proposed system it's expensive. Is mm -hmm. it prohibitive? I can't say. I'm I, I'm not the owner of the Wolves Den, but I would like to know going forward what type of plans. What is he thinking? What are his plans for moving ahead in 2018? Is mm -hmm. this something he wants to have for the net, for the whole calendar year? Is he trying to put some financing in place? I mean, I, I feel like right. we, we have a lot of questions, but do we want this to continue ad nauseum? And I think you said no, we don't. No, uh, I, I think if we can get started and just start with the ball rolling and find out when these are going to come in, and then we visit it to see if he can give us a certain time frame of when he thinks he's going to install the septic, then fine, we can work with him on that. Yeah. Other than that, I think we should um, bring the re um, the timetable to a certain point where he needs to report and give us an update mm -hmm. so that um, this doesn't get out of control and it just doesn't go on for months and months. And Perfect. Is our health agent the point of contact on this? With, or are you, um, have you spoken with him personally? No, but I will, I will speak with... Um, I will speak with Lisa directly, okay. and then I think what we'll do is put something in writing. Okay, and maybe we I think that makes more sense. Board. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, there's no change in the status of the Pembroke Hospital when Some this was in. when this was typed. We did get the email that I made a copy for everyone um, that came in to Sheila. What's that? Well, yeah. From Lisa. Does that say about the? Lisa from Lisa. Um, the, there's the lead engineer, Mark Bartlett, um, <coughs> on the Pembroke Water Pembroke Hospital water wastewater treatment facility. Called to update that they are preparing their application for the state. They will be applying to the Pembroke Board of Health at the same time. It's expected the state will take two months or more to review and approve the plan. We will, of course, have Dave David Primer review this plan on behalf of the town and make our approval contingent on state approval. Oh, yeah. At this time, the old system is functioning without without breakout, wonderful, and is being monitored daily. Good. Okay, so that's an update on that. And we knew that that one was going to be an ongoing one. Um, high acidity in the, the cadet industries study is complete. Um, there is a high acidity of waste. They're working on dosing the system to alter the pH. When complete, it will be submitted. So that would be the bakery, correct? Yes. Okay. The office activities have been slow a bit in regards to foot traffic. However, the office has been mailing um, all the license renewals mm -hmm. and the processing renewals are coming in. And then the... Um, Health agent's report goes on to the next two pages. Okay. Uh, Wolfstand, we have discussed. Um, we do have some new business. Um, do you have a folder on um, 538? If there is a folder, Washington Street. Really sure there is a folder. Okay, what um, this one? It was, a, it was an empty lot. Right. What this is is, and we've had this come in front of the board a lot. People years. can do a perk test on a um, vacant piece of property, but what they have to do is every calendar year they have to turn around and they have to um, reapply for the same perk. We have some properties that have had the same perk for the last ten. Yeah, if they years. roll over into the next year. Correct. So we do have a request that's being presented by Dana and Susan Gleason to extend the percolation test results that they obtained on December 27, 2016 on Lot 1, which is otherwise known as 538 Washington Street, parentheses Reservoir Road. It's right on the corner there. Yep, yeah. mm -hmm. right on the corner. So um, we just want to make a motion. Uh, one way or another in regards to uh, extending this percolation test. 
Do I hear a motion? I'd like to move to approve the request of Susan Gleason to extend the per test results for Lot 3 at 538 Washington Street, Reservoir Road. Okay. Do I hear a second? Can I make an amendment to that motion that we also approve the request of Robert Vaza to extend the per test for Lot 1 at 538 Washington Street? We'll hit that one. Uh, Robert Vaza is Lot 3. Vazer's lot one. Susan Gleason's Gleason lot three. Gleason's lot three. Oh, I'm looking. I'm okay. not. I'm not looking. I'm look. Okay. Sorry. I'm looking at the agenda. Am I incorrect, Jill? If you get the letter, the letter yeah. is correct. Okay. 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 So this three, this three. Vazer actually owned both of them. And, yeah, right. has been developed. and what I was doing, yes. so one and two, yep. and what one I and was doing, one and three, one was reading off of the agenda, which has it backwards. My apologies okay. to everyone. So the motion is for both lots one and three. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Who seconded that? Gary did. I so Gary I made an amendment to okay. Gail's motion. Second, I will second the emo the motion the amendment to the motion. <laughs> and all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So Sheila, will you just make a note for the agenda yeah. for December 11th? Make that correction, yes. and just flip those lot numbers. going to have um okay so ceiling is still another 25 minutes out let's move on to Shane McLoon spoke with me today he's not able to attend we all have in front of us nine Hollywood Avenue mm-hmm so local upgrade variants. He said we should be able to go through this, but I want everybody to take a peek at it. See it again. Due to the size, the minimum setbacks um, for the septic system could not be met. Also, the setbacks would further encroach upon if the applicant was required to put in a 150-gallon-per-day system as opposed to the required 110. Therefore, the maximum feasible compliance to allow the system to be reduced to a size of 110 from the 150. Um, it's the rubber membrane variance. would be appropriated okay so yeah. when we look at this we have the front of the house the proposed 15 gallon septic tank there is a membrane which mm -hmm. is the dotted line mm -hmm. which is all part of this we have to take down the existing shed to be replaced the first local upgrade variance is a reduction in the required setback cellar wall to the septic tank from 10 feet he's coming down to nine feet which is a one foot reduction so on that one we this is asking us to make a motion on that first item okay um, I move to accept the reduction in the required setback cell wall to septic tank from 10 to 9 feet. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second local um, variance requested is a variance to allow the SAS to be sized using Title V's 110 gallon per day proposed flow for this two bedroom house is 252 gallons per day. 
So they're bringing it, they're taking it down and using the Title V guideline of right. 110. To 110. Yep. Um, those are the only two variances. And again, this one is being called out separately as well. Okay. Do I hear a motion or any further discussion? Do you have anything to discuss, Gary? Um, I move to accept the variance allowed the SAS to be sized using the Title V's 110 gallon per day proposed for the flow. This two bedroom house is 252 um, GPD. The local variance requested is written. Do I hear a second? Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So this one's all set. And if I can have everybody's Hollywood back. Hollywood? Oh, Hollywood. <laughs> okay. Because Sheila was quite explicit. We were not to walk off with those. Let's go, yeah. I even gave you my purple phone. Um, it's good stuff. Thank you. And um, long time. Sheila, yes. here's the uh, minutes of the meeting signed. And then um, can you send that upstairs? OK. Do you want me to give you the correct address? Uh, Maybe she can email them to you tomorrow. Okay, so moving on to SCOBY. Another little tiny lot. Um, oh, that's a big field. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry, Gary. Scobie's off of Furnace Pond in Medicaid. Again, small lot size. Um, the couple of setbacks, we have local upgrades. We have three of them. Um, just want to take a look at this. Okay. Again, this one has the rubber breakout barrier yep. with the dotted line. This one again, this one is asking for a required setback from the cellar wall from 10 feet to 7 feet. Yeah. Yeah. And why don't we look at all three because there are three. Setback from the soil absorption system from 10 feet to 5.5. Yeah. So that's across. Depends with the barrier. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the barrier's coming, you know, right up. It's kind of almost looks like Right up to talking. the house, yeah. Yeah, which is good. Um, and then a reduction in the separation between the bottom of the SAA, S SAS, to the maximum seasonal high water table from five feet to four feet. So what they're doing is they're raising it to four feet. To five feet. Oh, from they're lowering to, it to four feet. To four feet from the natural seasonal high water table. Um, proposed tank. This is a proposed pump chamber. I read that it was going to be naturally graded. Oh, okay, naturally graded, but a pump system. One foot separation. Any questions, comments, concerns? So they're going from the cellar wall mm -hmm. out. They're going from the corner of the house to the tank mm -hmm. and then from the corner of the house to the field. Mm -hmm. All, you know, upgrade um, variances that we have 
seen before. I don't see any wells. Limit of The reduction, it's a two bedroom. It won't park for anything other than a two bedroom. So it will always be a two bedroom. So if we want to do these one at a time, um, if there is no further question or concerns, I'd like to make a motion in regards to 84 Scobie Ave under local upgrade variances, a reduction in the required setback cellar wall to the septic tank from 10 feet to 7 feet. Do I hear a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Want to do a second one? Hmm? Want to do a second one? Sure. Regarding the property of 84 Scobiev, I'd like to make a motion to accept the reduction in the required setback cellular wall to the SAS from 10 feet down to 5 and a half feet. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I got a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll do the second. <laughs> Sorry. One more. Ready? Yeah. One more? Yeah. In regards to 84 School we have, um, I move to accept the local upgrade variance as uh, requested as a reduction in the separation between the bottom of the SAS and the maximum seasonal high water table from 5 to 4.0. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. back too? She yes. Does. Absolutely. Watch her come across. Oh, I me. thought she was coming to grab Break your arm. <laughs> What'd she got? Kale, do you have one? I just, you got all three. Don't you? No. Oh, no. I sure do. I didn't open mine. I shared with Gary. Feedback from the um, Coalition of Aging regarding the PEMA data compilation and assistance Board of Health may provide. That was one of our next topics, Sheila. Yeah, it, it just wasn't that. Um, it was a lot simpler when it was on the, uh, uh, the agenda. But the last time, saying this is what we're going to look at again. This is a. Uh, in Lisa's words, she had used. Um, people at risk, you know, should we compile a list of people <laughs> at risk? And um, then the more I talk to Lisa about it, it's actually, the COA actually has a list of people and then, you know, you get into the privacy issues. Mm -hmm. So, um, I guess the general discussion is, I guess, maybe perhaps we should reach out to the COA and ask them if they need any of our assistance. You know, so. Mm -hmm. um, Anna Siri runs a tight ship over there, so. Right. Yeah. I'm sure she's fine, but mm -hmm. you know. but we need, it doesn't hurt nice. to reach out. It would be nice to reach out. It'd be a good gesture. Yep. On our part. Okay. So that's what it was just to generalize on. Right. And I kind of I I, I, I I think Ann is involved with Pima too. I mean, I know Lisa is. This is on a on a different. I'm a little unclear. I mean, I and I, I keep using the terminology "gang of 14." I know these are some things that we brainstorm. We've probably whittled the list down. I'm I'm not clear exactly what where we're discussing or what lease what we're what the council on aging 
is looking for well they, it's a health risk it's it's the people that are um isn't it a list of people that um have limitations well, well what is it that they want from uh, well it's not that they, they, they want, want any. anything um this is which one was it this is to save them should we <laughs> yeah <laughs> which number yeah oh. what 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 number was well, it that's this one right here take a more active role take a more proactive stance on Oh, Rental no. properties. No, that's no. not it. Right here. Is it that one? Pima? No. What our goals for Pima are mandatory. Three being addressed. Visions look like in 10 years. Level growth. What's our goal? Dredging. Okay. It was number seven on the original list, which became a, a list of 16. Should we start a handle with care or an at risk list? Is one list enough broken out by category question mark? So when this was addressed to Lisa, when we had gone over what some of the things we may want to look at, take a look at and discuss, um, this number seven turned into Request feedback from the Coalition of Aging Director regarding Pima data compilation and assistance that the Board of Health can provide. So she has our elderly population that are at risk. Le a health have, agent has has a list. The coalition does. They should the already. The Council of Aging. Council of yeah, aging. the Council of Aging. They've been developing that for years, and they have their list broken yeah, out into okay. different people addresses yeah, do they because we say is one console oh no it looks like there's one list now is one consolidated list enough so there's one list now mm -hmm. and do we want it broken out by category have you seen the list no because of it, we don't see the list because of the privacy understood so who has the list who's in possession of the director of council of, of, council of, of Asia. Asia. so even so our health agent doesn't have the list correct okay. so and the police department so they know um like handle with care would be um i know when um some people have a person who may have dementia or alzheimer's residing in the home they the police department like to know so in case a phone call comes in from that person mm -hmm. they have a little bit more understanding of what this the limitations are correct so that you know things are addressed and handled in a certain way the question ended up being changed is should we just in fact reach out to the coalition of aging the director asking if there's anything that we can help assist with please feel free assist or, or back up or, or the same thing right we it, shouldn't right because as the board of health you don't really have a direction with a lot of people no it would be the co the, the coalition, the visiting right. nurses, as well as the fire and police department. Mm -hmm. Emergency person. Yeah. So I really don't think we should have a list. I don't think, I think the lists are where they need to be. But if we can do anything, you know, we help out doing the flu clinics with the mm -hmm. public health nurses and, and, and about, you know, the different and homes. Yeah, and yeah. wellness checks and things like that. Does our health agent currently have access to see this list? I do not believe so, but I don't know. Okay. I mean, you're Look almost getting seven. to the point of, of HIPAA. You know what I mean? I mean it's yeah. not quite HIPAA, but... Mm -hmm. it's, it's a borderline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you right now, after working for 20 years, it's, it, that's a definite... So, what are we That's doing? a nurse's I think it would be nice if, if the Board of Health on behalf of all three members and our health agent, just send a letter to the Coalition on Aging Director just offering, you know, if there is anything that we can assist with or, or you know. I'd, I'd like to take it a step further. I, uh, I'd like to invite. Gail, that's an old one. You don't have that. I'd, I'd like to invite the head like of the Council on Aging somewhere, to, to come in here. But not in and, and just maybe spend five or so minutes and giving us a little a little background a little history a little education on what the senior center does 
well, perhaps what the senior center does, but you know, I'm not looking to for a, a definition of what that what this list is. Nor do I want to. Do you just want to see what the role is? Well, with I'd the senior like to, you know, if, if if the fact that our health agent raised that topic initially way back when there was something that was kind of churning through her mind. So, I certainly, speaking for myself, wouldn't mind having inviting if the person who's running the council of the agent to come in here and just give a little chat. They don't have to. I'm not requiring it. I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm just throwing it out there for discussion. Maybe, maybe a, almost like a meet and greet. Sure. Right. Just to get familiar with each other mm -hmm. and to see, bounce so back a few cases. things. Is there any way we can help you? Mm -hmm. You know? yeah, It's hard for me to sit here and say, well, the Board of Health you know, right. we will be as helpful as possible. It, it mm -hmm. might, well, we it have might, to be proactive if yeah. you're going to be as helpful as possible. So well, it would be nice to get a little overview. You right. know, the other thing was, is, you know, um, several years back when we lost power for a week and, mm -hmm. and the generator went at, at Hobbamock, um, the seniors were moved to the Council on Aging. Mm -hmm. And through Pima, you know, all hands on deck, anybody that was available and got their power back, you know, I, I mean, I went up and spent eight hours up there doing puzzles and getting juice, and they ran out of ginger ale, so I walked over to the grocery store. I mean, those kind of things, that. which was nice to be able to interact with the faces and just right. calm them, because, you know, there were 32 cart, uh, cuts that right. were set up, and these people were, you know, they were very displaced and... and they weren't comfortable, um, so it was just trying to make them as comfortable. Right. But I think that's a good idea. I think that's a good idea. So why don't we um, do that, Sheila? I'm kind of thinking end of January. Uh, one twenty-two. January twenty-two. January twenty-two. Yeah. Twenty-two. Yep. Either that. January eighth, and then twenty-two. Yeah, either that meeting or the meeting after that, whatever happens to work with her schedule. You know, it's not mandatory. We just want to do, you know, do a meet and greet. And, and, and they may even have a couple of suggestions how we can be of a little more assistance, specific, mm -hmm. rather than us just saying here this evening, well, we, we will make ourselves available mm -hmm. to be of assistance. So mm -hmm. she may have some ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Is that a motion or do we need to make a motion? I don't think we need to make a motion. It was just, just a to discussion um, with an invite. Um, okay. Yeah, why don't we see if he's there? Because I think I have everything on here. Yeah, we've done. That's all that's left, right? Yep. Um, our um, next upcoming in January 8th, so we will not be meeting until after the first of the year. Okay. Um, another general discussion, develop reasonable missions and obtainable goals for the Board of Health for 2018. Okay. Um, I would like, Gary, we spoke, I spoke, excuse me, uh, with Donna earlier, and the MAHB conference that I went to was very enlightening on the cannabis, and on March 16th, I believe the, the date was, I know it's in the middle of March, um, they have to have... Um, um, regulation set into place. April 1st, they go into act. They have warned us that because this is a felony with um, the government, with the federal government, that the banks won't touch this and that it's going to be in our um, federal tre treasury. But they've also warned us to walk lightly and to be very careful with decisions that we've made. The edibles will not be considered as food. Um, there's quite a bit that was on there. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough time. My computer kind of went down on me, so I, and writing it wouldn't have been nice for you people. So, so we're gonna, I'm, I'm gonna um, bring we, that up to the next yeah, meeting. Yeah, on the eighth, Gail's gonna, in, in advance of the meeting, get us the paperwork yes. that she received, okay, excellent. as well as we can have a general discussion, and we'll let Gail um, provide appropriate backup material. They gave me specific terminology, specific specific things like what they're calling the paraphernalia mm -hmm. now. Um, uh, it was very enlightening to, as far as the board, it answered a lot of, I think, our questions that we've had in the past. Mm -hmm. It filled in a lot of holes. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Do you know yeah. the nearest? Well, I'm taking notes, so I had to come back and take notes. Okay, I'm sorry. Should I have not talked? I'm sorry, Sheila. 
<laughs> Do you know the nearest community that is going to be opening up? Marshfield and Hanover, if I'm not correct, if I'm not mistaken. So they are neighbors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know that um, Hanover, there's some big vote tomorrow night going on in, in Hanover that I read on the um, social media. Yeah. But Marshfield has approved one. Um, there were only um, two municipalities that did not vote for this uh, out of Massachusetts. Did not vote for? The cannabis. Only two. I was surprised. Did not for a, a, a retail establishment right. opening up? We being one of them. Uh, no, that didn't vote. The, the town meet at the town elections did not vote for the cannabis to be approved. There were only two towns mm -hmm. out of all the towns in Massachusetts. I think it was 350 some odd, 356 or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I was quite amazed. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I think I'll be kind and give Kevin another five minutes. He's um, not here. No, he's not here. We'll take a break. Sure, why don't we take a break, Kyle? You want to take a break for a few minutes? Okay. Thank you. You want to know the time? Uh, yeah, hold on. Uh, on. Seven seventeen. We're going to take a brief break. Thank you. Can you? Cl I'm confused. What you said about the two towns that didn't. When we did a vote, when they, everybody did first did the vote, whether or not they were going to approve marijuana or not in their town. And the, they were wait, in, to make it legal in the state? You're not talking about to the make ballot. It legal in the, the state. ballot question? No, to make it legal in the state. The ballot question. The ballot question. Yeah, it is the, the ballot, ballot question. question. Pembroke didn't pass it. I know that, but uh, are you saying there are only two towns that when you say didn't vote or didn't pass no, it? No, didn't pass it. So. Wait a minute. There's only two, I thought. Yep. And we can talk, we can Madam wait Chair. and have him come? Um, I'd like to input a little bit. I, I would be more inclined where he did not show up this evening that we send the fine to him and if he wishes to contest it, then he may appear in front of the board where he's already been in violation and he's been called to the board and he has failed to show without notification to the board mm -hmm. and held up the time here. I would think that more at this point that um, Mr. Masilin would be more or less wasting our time by us keeping requesting. Um, and with the fact that he did not pull the permit and he did not call for the inspection, it is stated that it is a fine if Mr. Sealand, I would be, I would propose that um, we send him the fine, and that uh, if he wishes to appeal it, that he may be appear appear in front of the board. Comments, thoughts? No. No. What I have um, in regards to um, when a installer's license is issued. Um, it's an additional $100 fee for not doing the procedure correctly. So, um, Gail, was that a motion? Yes, I'd like to make a motion on that, that Mr. Sealand um, be served with a fine, and it's $100 for not pulling the permit, Madam Chair? Correct, and or calling for a final inspection by our health agent. Okay. I would propose that Mr. Salen receive a fine for $100 uh, for putting in a distribution box repair without pulling a revised permit um, and also completing the work without calling for a health inspection agent. Mr. Salen will receive a fine of $100 by the Board of Health. If he feels that he would like to appeal it, he may appear in front of the Board of Health meeting. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No. Okay. Okay. All right. Unless there's anything else you want to discuss um, 
or have any other concerns um, before we close the meeting, I would like to wish each and everyone here as well in Pembroke a very Merry Christmas and a Happy Hanukkah to all. Uh, currently, it is seven. Is that a motion? Should we second that motion, Madam Chair? Mr. Fine, if you would like to second that, I'd be more than happy to accept that. I'll second that, that motion. Wonderful. Um, I, anybody call, like to call for an adjournment? I'd like to call for an adjournment, please. Okay. It is 727. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night. Okay.